Good luck. All right. Welcome back to the Shogi Teaching Ladder. This is where you play one opponent that's higher rated and one opponent that is lower rated. And after each game, uh, post-game analysis is performed. So it's been a long time since we've played Lily, but this should be good fun. in Discord now. There we go. All right. So yeah, Lily plays Static Rook, and I generally play Third File Rook. Um. Yeah, I guess I'm. Hmm. Hmm. Do I play third foul rook here against static rook, or do I go for central foul rook? Central foul is what I've been playing a lot lately. Um, but this is what I want to master, so I can build up a consistent system. So here, in order to deal with this pawn, I do need to move the bishop up. Sometimes this tends to lend itself toward um, this threat to exchange bishops. And I can block this diagonal if this does open. Okay, my overlay looks good. Um, yeah, so last time we played Lily, I think we were both rated or ranked one Don. Uh, she has since climbed the rating ladder and played many different opponents on 81 Dojo. Um, I've just been here at one Don, although I've increased my rating a bit through repeated participation in this teaching ladder and just whatever selection of opponents that were available and we got the games scheduled, happened to result in me gaining rating points. I've been watching Muranaka on um, YouTube. He's got a series where he frequently plays many different strategies against many different opponents. So it's good fun to watch him and learn from his examples, as well as uh, whatever other live streamers, including Shogi Harbor, um, give us uh, as much guidance as they can. So I'm thinking I want to bring the silver up to defend this point. Um, I probably want to play half Mino or Mino on the right. And this is a formation I've played before. And maybe I can play it well, even though I've not played this in a while. It is possible, I believe, to exchange bishops, like move up a silver to support the bishop and get them exchanged. That That's better than moving the gold and getting them exchanged, but I think there's... No, actually, it's unreasonable because there would be this bishop drop forking a pawn here and a pawn there, and after which things would get very complicated. So Joseki has closed this diagonal, even though this blocks the bishop temporarily. Um, but the notion is that this bishop will activate somehow, just not right now. Uh, so yeah, I've blocked my rook, I've blocked my bishop, but um, the plan is to unblock them. The other part of the plan is to get my king safely out of the center. Um, uh, since I played third fall rook, I do want to push this pawn.
since we got here through an interesting move ordering, potentially moving the pawn might be the best move. Um, pawn, pawn, silver, 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 silver. Does not hang the pawn if I push it. So I can push this without hanging it. Is it a good idea? Probably not right away, because my head of my bishop is not defended. Let's try to get my king to safety. If this moves, then I can bring a silver up. I don't want to spend too much time before a pawn up. Silver, silver, pawn hits here. I do need to protect this point before I get under a heavy attack. And also, probably this point with the silver protects this as well. Historically, you've probably seen some of my older games where I bring up the silver twice, and then I get really excited and then just blast my silver all the way over here. Um, that's generally not Joseki. Um, so there might be move orderings where this rook does unorthodox things, but I think we're so far in Joseki. I know my opponent for the All-American Fall Tournament, uh, Ion Gray, who I'll be facing uh, very soon, uh, tends to play this pawn, this edge pawn, to 9-4 um, in a lot of different move orderings. Um, however, it's not always the best use of a tempo to push this, even though very frequently it's useful. There can be better moves to play. Aggression in Shogi can be quite useful. So yeah, there will be the silver up, the silver up protecting this point, and this point so that my bishop can, if necessary, or if useful, start moving again. Once the bishop moves, I should be able to move on the third file. Maybe I should push the pawn in front of the rook right away? Again, I was nervous about doing that, or about bringing the silver up and doing that right away, because maybe I want my rook elsewhere. With swinging rook, normally we do refer to like third file, uh, fourth file, opposing rook, central file rook as separate strategies. However, they can transpose when the situation arises. And in this situation, I've started to build a castle, and my opponent's playing a bit more aggressively than I am, and that's okay. Um, But, yeah, very soon, um, in terms of number of moves, yeah, Gota will commit to something here. And so she commits this pawn to 6-4. We count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 4 here. Uh, the idea is the silver is going to come out this way. And since the silver approaches, I think it's reasonable that my silver also should approach this position. Um, the thing I'm fuzziest on is if I should push my third foul pawn. This, I'm slowly running out of chances to do that. But if I do it too early, I'm in trouble. Um,
the value of a silver increases the closer it is to the opposing king. Hmm. So... I'm also confused, do I want to push the silver and the king back, or do I want to move the king again, or do I want to push the edge pawn? The edge pawn transposes, but... Um, I think this is the best timing for me to move the silver up. When I give up by moving this, as a couple things, principally control of the 8-8 square. Um, control of that square is a bit lessened now. Um, and I guess I give up the ability to play curious but perhaps unsound shapes where the silver is just going to stay back here. Um, Temporarily, this blocks both the rook and the bishop, so that we can expect the silver is going to move again very soon. Uh, the other thing I gave up by pushing this is the ability to push my third foul pawn. Right, so we're actually going to see the silver move through the edge. Um, hmm. Curious. This is complicated. I could open the long diagonal. Probably to my detriment. Um... But if I want an unorthodox strategy, that's the way to do it. No, no, it's detrimental to do that. I can't do that here. Um, Let's put my king to safety. At this point, it would be risky, but I could consider opening the diagonal. This knight move is engineered to strongly discourage such an idea. Um, hmm. Not sure what I think about that. <laughs> well, this blocks the silver. So if the idea, yeah, okay, let's find some next idea here. This is now a sensible transposition. Mm. 
many castles will favor this. The only one which didn't was Anaguma Castle, where he buried the king in the corner. But, yeah, this seems sensible here. I'm trying to figure out which of many shapes my opponent is building before I hard commit to one thing or another. I think this is as reasonable as anything. I still haven't ruled out some interesting possibilities later. One thing I don't like is that there is going to be at least one weakness, no matter what castle I pick. Um, but now this is probably a, a reasonable shape to build here. My king is three files out of the center. I still haven't decided if it's going to be Mino or half Mino. I considered tower Mino a little bit and then thinking, well, if I push this, then it, that weakens the side of the board. Um, so this shape so far is pretty flexible. But yeah, so far I've played a lot of really patient um, moves. And I know usually I'm playing much sharper, more dangerous things. And here I'm just too intimidated to do that. So. Let me play calmer, safer ideas. Um, now, this is my last chance to push this, then this, and 
but all hell break loose. But I think this doesn't work. I don't think it's even close. If I push, Font takes push. Uh, if they exchange here, if I get a silver there, Knight takes hits my silver. Silver moves, they push this brook pawn. I take this pawn hitting the knight. They promote. Like, this is not close. Um, so yeah, I need to abandon crazy plans soon. I can still build half Mino. There's nothing wrong with half Mino. But any idea of, like, trying to exchange bishops before the king is in... Uh, well, the king is in the boat. But before the king is protecting the bishop, that's not really viable here. Um, Let's try to find another path for my bishop. Because opening this diagonal generally is a bad idea, and here specifically is. And I've not been able to find any trick to make opening the diagonal better here.
これより秒読みに入ります三十秒。四十秒。五十秒。一、二、三、四、五、六、七、八、九。I'm still trying to understand the meaning of this move. It's a complicated position. I need to activate my rook. I'm activating my rook.
30秒40秒50秒1234567891ラストラスト。30秒40秒50秒12345678秒秒これより秒読みに入ります30秒40秒50秒1234567891ラストラスト秒ラスト秒ラスト秒ラスト秒ラスト秒ラスト秒ラスト秒ラスト秒ラスト秒ラスト秒ラスト30秒40秒50秒1 2 3 4
30秒40秒50秒30秒40秒50秒12345678Lots of ideas, too many to explain. Um, this seems to be the only path forward, so forward we go. I want to promote the rook. I want to attack my opponent's king.
40秒50秒三十秒。四十秒。五十秒。一、二、三、四、五、六、七、八、九。三十秒。四十秒。五十秒。一、二、三、四、五、六、七、八。Well, the nightmare piece combination has appeared or will appear. Bishop and knight. So I need to play carefully. Sanjubio. Yonjubio. 五十秒。一、二、三、四、五、六、七、八、九。三十秒。四十秒。五十秒。一、二、三、四、五、六、七。I don't know if this is right or if this is stupid. It might be both. Like, yeah, promotion is important too. Um, but then I, the lance is invincible due to many tactics, so. Instead, trying to form a gap near the king seems like something to strike at. But, um.
30秒 hmm. Yeah, there are multiple flaws with my previous play. 40 秒 <sighs> Gosh darn it. Well, no, there's ideas here still. 50 秒 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, So my reasoning breaking this is that I want to place pieces on the square. And that I don't need two dragons if I have just one dragon. So this has some motivation. But it might not be good. Earlier I was saying I need to use my pawns to attack. One way is pawn here, other pawn here. So many options. So I have threats against the knight plants and potentially pushing this edge on myself and trying my own edge attack. Meanwhile, I'll try not to put my rooks on any of the landmine squares. It's too much to remember. Thirty 
30秒。30秒40秒50秒1234567891秒。
30秒40秒50秒30秒40秒50秒1234567秒。30秒40秒50秒1234567秒30秒40秒50秒1234567秒。1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 30秒40秒50秒1234567秒。30秒
40秒50秒1234567はい30秒40秒50秒1234567はい。30秒40秒50秒1 2 3 4 5 6ショギ is hard. I had ideas I didn't express here. And I'm starting to understand why they tell you to practice so much sume shogi. I'll do my best. So far, I've only been evaluating that from a perspective of does it mate me? I forgot that can also escape the horse with tempo. 30秒40秒50秒30秒40秒50秒
30秒。30秒。This is madness. We both need to calm down. Are we going to? That's not how we play.30秒40秒1 2 3 430秒40秒50秒
30秒40秒30秒。30秒。30秒。I'm not impressed with my move. ちょっと。
30秒40秒50秒1234567891秒10三十秒。四十秒。五十秒。一、二、三、四、五、六、七。三十秒。四十秒。五十秒。一、二、三、四、五、六、七、八、九。三十秒。四十秒。五十秒。一、二、三、四、五、六、七、八。三十秒。四十秒。五十秒。一、二、三、四、五、六、七、八、九。三十秒
40秒50秒12345678ヤーソンモーフヒューダディスプレイズミーイツゴインゲットプレイドアンアウトゲットゥーウェットバッ I might get through it I might not. That one. Mix for the game. <sighs> Whew, jeez, that was extremely intense. Thanks, everyone. Very good game, thank you. Oh, yeah, I think probably I missed some, a couple mates earlier. Uh, yeah, that was a nail biter for our entire audience. Uh, thankfully, on our channel, we don't have prediction points to worry about. But no, I joke. But yeah, this was intense. Yeah, let's start from the beginning. Thank you very much. So, 
Yeah, this is a teaching ladder game. As such, we play a lower rated and higher rated opponent over the weekend and analyze both games. Here I played third file rook, although uh, my rook ultimately emerged on the fourth file instead. And I reasoned that I really wanted to attack through this 3-4 point. Uh, yeah, let me also allow all our spectators on 81 Dojo to make their comments heard, so I can zoom in here. I guess maybe this is wrong. I'm not sure. This... Yeah, I, th I think both are okay. I don't believe in my attack here, having seen the game. Um... I mean, pawn drop was the first thought that occurred to me. And yeah, this does force my rook to... M okay, yeah, and this gives you a tempo. So, yeah, that seems... That seems like a reasonable defense. Yeah. And then, even though I could... Uh... Yeah, my attack is not as fast here as it is in the game. Um, and I'm not seeing some other trick. Somehow I counted that both my rooks would end up on the top row. And somehow they'd be, like, breaking here. But that's not at all what's happening here. I can't drop a rook hitting this point in the night because you have time to defend. Um... So maybe at this point I have to like defend against this knight fork? I don't know. But yeah, perhaps perhaps like you say, the pawn drop on 3-3 is best. Yeah, and that does defend the knight, so any tricks I've got. Well Okay, you have a knight in hand too. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, this makes sense. Um, so yeah, perhaps the pawn drop was forced, and or at least perhaps against the pawn drop I can't go pursuing the knight, but then I'm already down a knight and you've got a promoted piece, and yeah. Um, yeah, I, can, I forgot about this. The previous turn I thought about it. Here I wanted to play it, although I saw your horse protects the knight. But, um, so I was thinking, oh, yeah. Can we put this on the big board temporarily, or? No, oh, sorry, I meant here. Okay, yeah, let's put this on the large board so folks can see it. Oh, here, yeah. Yeah, here there was this sack, there was the silver drop on 2-1. It's all fairly, um... I was afraid of New Yoku, believe it or not, um, and of our favorite new clip shape that we all learned about. Um, so, am I crazy? May oh, I'm sorry. This hello, apologies. Uh, I thought this gold defends the silver. Um, okay, that being the case, uh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah, that looks very difficult for Gota. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's a really good... I was really surprised to see Lance 6-2 because uh, there were so many tactics there. Um, but I trusted Lily. <laughs> Uh, this silver drop is uh, an overplay, um, I think. I'm pretty sure that against the silver drop, you can just, like, dodge right to the side there. Because um, the horse has the knight defended already, and I'm out of pieces in hand. Um, yeah, so... I think I just blocked my dragon, which is extremely bad news. Um, 
and after I played this silver drop, I was not impressed with myself here. But um, I mean, maybe I've got something, but it, it's yeah. So from here on out, I just continuously attack. That night drop was scary at the time you played it, but um, afterward, oh yeah, yeah, something like this looks interesting. Um, I was trying to figure out how do I arrange more pieces to attack this king. Um, so this is not easy. Um, if I had one more piece, this would be easier to figure out. Um, wait, can I do the same thing we did in the game, though? Does this maybe still playable? And with similar ideas as what we had in the game, maybe? Okay. Yeah. That's fine, I suppose. Um, unless I checkmate, but the, I don't think I do. Um, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, this could be interesting. All right, thanks, uh, Necrotus. Um, yeah, that's an interesting thought. And yeah, at least that doesn't cost you a bishop. Whereas this way that we ended up playing the game, I got a bishop in hand, and that ended up being quite powerful. Let's see what else we got. Yeah, you're right. You read basically the same variation here. Oh, I see. Well, I think here, I mean, you've read basically the same variation, but isn't the outcome different here? Because now that I've got a bishop in hand, I can start with this. And then I've, uh, like, I have another option here. And something like this, I guess. I'm not sure it comes out to the same outcome as by point. Um, so I've got a silver in hand here. Ah, uh, interesting. How do I not have mate here? <laughs> Shogi's hard. Ah, <laughs> uh, wow. Um, hang on. This something doesn't look right about this. <laughs> I think it's a bit different here because I have a horse. Um. I mean, surely I can keep this act going, right? And then we take the gold, and uh, with the gold, surely... I don't know. Where's my mate? <laughs> I don't know. This is... Hmm. Um. Hmm. Does this mate It'd be a nice coincidence if it did? Let's put this on the large board again. And then I can even get away with this, right? Um, this has to mate. I've got too many pieces here.
Yeah, thank you. Yeah. There we go. Thanks. See, I think that is meaningfully different with the bishop and with me having a silver in hand. Um, the other way, I just have to like collect pieces, but this one actually mates. Wow. So, yeah, I guess... I guess you're right in the opening that pawn drop 3 3 was absolutely necessary because, like, this attack was just really severe. That's kind of surprising how severe it was. Yeah, this bishop drop 5 5 scared me, but um, didn't end up defending uh, well enough. Okay, this is a good counter attacking idea, but. Um, hmm, I don't know. There is a saying that without an attack you can't win, but oh goodness, um, yeah, I guess I, my threats are too numerous at this point. Like this seems this glance drop seems too desperate. I don't know how to play. The, uh, my first reaction is like this dragon is a nightmare. I would try to fortify this castle somehow, even though I'm told like defense never works, but. Um, it just, surely I've got to have a mate as Senta here somehow. Like, I was starting to look at this sort of thing. Um, I'm not sure if that actually works, by the way, but, um, like, no, actually this defense against my remaining check, doesn't it? So this is a good, this is a good play, but... Um, I'm just really afraid looking at this castle shape. Something seems slightly off, and I'm not sure what. Uh, what do I play here? I don't know. It's actually kind of hard to break this. Maybe this is everybody's homework problem, is figure out how to break this after Lance 2-4, because I'm not finding a break. Like, it really, really feels like there should be something here, but, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm starting to look at this. Um, so... Yeah, if Gota doesn't give away any more pieces here, this would be the line to try to defend without giving other pieces. Okay, yeah, starting to read this. Um... Oh, right, so I've got like three generals and a knight. Okay, yeah, that's almost certainly enough. Uh... Yeah, that makes sense. So I guess that's why I was a bit afraid of like a lance drop 2-4, is that like these pieces surround the king very heavily. And I'm pretty sure that there's some mate with the generals and the knight here somewhere. Um, feels like there ought to be. Um... So, yeah, I would think of trying to defend against this dragon somehow, even though, like, I don't know how to do it. But, um, yeah, this counterattack is a good idea. It's just, um, Senta has a lot of sacrifices given where all these pieces were placed in the, this particular moment. And unless Gota can like weather the storm a bit and then later start an attack somehow, it's isn't quite gonna work out. Um I guess I should try to solve this, shouldn't I? Uh goodness, where is it? So 
so check yeah this is the so we don't need the knight at the end of the combination we can use it here instead oh that's kind of cool okay yeah right and and so yeah santa has he she here that makes sense yeah this turns out half mino is a pretty strong shape um so this lance by itself wasn't enough to break it i wonder i mean i, I really like the spirit of this lance drop is starting a counter attack uh timing wise uh yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, yeah, so that's powerful stuff. Um, wow. It's kind of amazing that so many things originate from just... Oh, okay, I see I'm the host of the analysis board. Let me go try to demonstrate stuff. See, I liked the spirit of... Uh, that's weird. So I'm the host of the board, so I should be able to play and play variations, retact variations, and so forth. Um, so, I mean, this is desperate, but um, this kind of puts some kind of shape together i guess there's still so many ways i can hit this from the front but there's lots of pieces to defend with but maybe this isn't really the most critical timing to look at i mean yeah the most critical timing i think would have been when that when we were making the decision about when you pointed out pawn drop three three uh, yeah, you correctly pointed out this silver drop to try to defend this as well. Um, other possible. Oh, you don't have a knight, do you? Um, yes, uh, silver defense from the back might also be prudent. Uh, yeah, this check does save a tempo, but I think... Yeah, this knight sack ultimately gave me a knight um i think my attack quiets down if only uh i mean how do we defend this we might have to give back some material and it's unpleasant giving up a bishop but that might be necessary uh how do we defend this to give up enough give up some material but not give up too much I don't know. Um, I guess a silver here or something. Um, oh, bishop here? Interesting. Right, because I don't have another knight to continue this harassing the 3 3 square. Uh, so for me to prevail. Wow. It's going to be a really tall order for me to try to prevail here. Um, I mean, I was considering gold 4-1, but it doesn't at all work. Uh, so I have to try something crazy like this, I guess. But no, that doesn't work either. If I take the horse, the bishop takes... Um, Wow, did I just phantom that this attack is reasonable? Because the more I look at it, I, I'm not particularly liking my attack here. But yeah, if we take, we take and promote. I've got a bishop. I can use this bishop here. And I can pick up a lance threat in this. But yeah, this uh, seems like a very different game. Yeah, so, and yeah, this king 2-2 two, two seems very reasonable. Um, hmm. 
That's so weird. I mean, a, a lance will be a little bit useful, and being able to take the knight and have, slowing down your attack a bit is of value to me. Um, but yeah, this this bishop drop defense looks very reasonable because I, without gold and without silver, it's hard for me to attack. Oh, that's a nice fork too. Um, whether or not I have a powerful rejoinder, I'm not sure. So, yeah, the horse defends this point too. Um, hmm. It's interesting. Uh, against this, I will kind of want to find another way to sacrifice material and continue attacking. Is this completely crazy? I wonder. Um, so the rook at the head is not as powerful as the rook piercing at the rear of my castle. Um, so... Oh, I just don't know. Um... Yeah, I don't have an easy way to strike all these targets at once here anymore. Um, yeah, if I try putting the lance on any of these files, none of them are quite working the way I anticipated. Um, given the strange arrangement of pieces, this does something kind of fun, but that doesn't last forever. Yeah, my attack is so slow here. Oh. Okay. Um... Yeah, that makes sense. And, yeah, it takes me too many turns to get an attack mobilized here. I'm in... Uh, I think I prefer Gota's position here. I don't see a way that I can just, like, ruthlessly attack like happened in the game. Um... Hmm. Yeah, I'm out of ideas here. Let's see, I can give back the hat and take a look at anything else we want to look at, because I'm stumped. But um, I'm not sure I had other comments other than... Um, yeah, we just both missed some things this game. This is a complicated game. Okay, yeah, thanks for the game. Yeah, cool. All right. Yeah, I'm not sure I have too many other comments. I think we thoroughly reviewed this. And I think Lily's point right after the game was spot on. Um, that um, this knight advance ended up being really dangerous. And something more solid would have forced us down a very different path. Um, I would have had to, like... We took a brief look at this. Um... Since that doesn't quite work, this is an alternative, but this is probably even worse. And sure, I've got two rooks, but it's, yeah, this doesn't look useful. So this would have been a strong counter. I might have had to go back here. I have two rooks. So I can still drop a rook and threaten a whole bunch of stuff, but I'm giving a lance and getting a lance and... You know, this knight's going to come in and threaten stuff here, too. So, it's a tough game. Um, assuredly, somewhere in here... Oh, I wonder, too. So just because now with the knight advanced, it's not possible to drop a pawn on 3-2. Is there ever an opportunity 
Uh, so taking the lance is dangerous. Um, another possible. Well, that doesn't work here. Yeah, I was considering like silver drop here, bishop drop there, anything that like defends this knight more thoroughly, even though it is defended or once already. Heck, even knight drop two one might be sensible, because she just picked up a knight here. So, um, yeah, this castle was just slightly too fragile, and uh, four pieces guarantee an attack. This silver is probably, um, well, no, it's not the last decisive moment, because the last moment was when I got this bishop, and this just becomes overwhelming, as opposed to, like, say if we used a silver for a similar purpose, I'm probably still stronger here by a lot, but not necessarily, mate. But um, eventually, somehow, I prevailed here. Uh, yeah, this pawn push was dangerous uh, and surprising. It does give the king somewhere to go, but it also allows my bishop to attack from the rear. So, um, yeah, this... If there wasn't already a last critical point, this surely must be the point where you have to block with something, and I have to find a way in. And it might not be easy. Um... So, yeah, I mean, potentially just block with a knight. I don't like the idea of blocking with a knight. Nobody wants to put a lance here, but this might be called for. I don't know. Giving up generals just makes this more dangerous, so it's either a knight or a lance. And probably a lance, because lances are easier to defend against than knights. But... um. Yeah, I'm not sure how I continue this here. Like, probably I have an attack. Probably it's not easy. And probably I've missed mates elsewhere, like uh, Lily pointed out so kindly. Uh, where was it? Not here. Oh, maybe it was later. It was in a different position. Yeah, before the silver drop. Or this lance drop, uh, yeah, somewhere around here. I'm sorry, before this horse takes pawn, um, there was the sacrifice, which I looked at. I didn't say it aloud during the game. After the not doing this and after horse takes pawn, you heard me mutter about stuff, and that's what I was muttering about, that, like, I could not find a way to make this work at the time it was there. Uh, but it's probably good enough. But yeah, defending forever is very difficult. And yeah, this, I think, overpowers the camp. Especially after this pawn drop. The pawn drop is a very light defense. But here, given just how much is being used to attack with. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know what happened. Um... Maybe I'm winning the whole time somehow through some brilliant combination. It's probably quite difficult. Um, so maybe there's like this, or I don't know. Anyway. Um, yeah, somehow I do prevail. So that's our second teaching ladder game of uh, this weekend. I got to play against Lily Threedon. And uh, since I was rated 1649, that was my promotion game. Um, so actually, um, yeah, I have now promoted to Tudon on 81 Dojo. And good luck to me on trying to keep that. And good luck to our U.S. Uh, World Shogi League teams who will be performing or playing throughout the year. Um, they'll be studying, they'll be preparing. And look forward to um, Shogi Explained and others as they do their coverage of uh, those games. Those will be very interesting to watch. Hope we enjoyed this game. Uh, for those not seeing the mate at the end, um, yeah. you can put that on the board. Yeah, this is the lightest way to do it. Actually, you don't have to do that. We could just drop the gold here directly. There you go. 
So yeah, uh, thanks to everyone for watching, and we'll see you next time.